Hi there, this is Cyril Jeet, your best friend in programming and in this video we are going to discuss Blazor CSS isolation. Now CSS isolation is something that that's a good thing to have and if you have a bunch of components, a bunch of Razor components in your code, you want to make sure that they are maintainable and that removing any component or modifying it does not impact the rest of the code. Now the problem with CSS that I have faced as a long time programmer is as your application grows in complexity as you add the pages there are often unique you know uh, styles unique pieces of CSS that are applicable only to a single page or maybe a couple of pages and even if you've removed those pages from your app it's often not feasible or not possible to go back and modify the CSS class to remove that CSS code. So over time what happens is your CSS style sheet fills with more and more unused selectors and classes that are not used at all in your app and it just makes things messier, harder to manage and you don't know what is actually used or not used. It also increases the CSS file size too. Well that's another matter. In terms of organization, it's a bad thing to have things that you don't use at all and CSS isolation solves that. We're going to discuss three topics in this video. First, what is CSS isolation? Second, how to create isolated CSS in Blazor? And the third, applying CSS to child components. So the first thing, what is CSS isolation? As I told you earlier, if you have CSS code that impacts a particular component, a particular Razor component, let's say you've got a login screen and you've got some sort of widget or button over there that impacts, the, that needs to be styled individually, separately from the rest of the application, the style sheet selectors, the styles that you apply on that page are not used again, then there is no need to have a centralized repository of those CSS style sheets. There is no need to put that CSS style in a centralized file. What you want to do is you want to make sure that it's in, that it's connected only to that particular component and when you remove that particular component if you maybe you need to remove that page or you need to change it that CSS style is the only thing modified you don't have to cross reference it to a central page look for data or hunt what you need to change let's say you end up removing a style selector or you st or a style for that particular component you shouldn't have to go to a central page so with CSS isolation it makes things very organized because that particular CSS file that you create using CSS isolation is going to be connected only to that particular component. It's going to make the maintenance easier and more logical. So let's take a look at how exactly it works. So here's an app that I and my team are working on right now. It's a pretty standard login screen. And you, if you look at the code, there is a login.razor component. Here is the CSS code. We are using Bootstrap so you can see all the style sheets, all the classes that we have in Bootstrap. It's referring to a image from the assets from the WW root folder too. And the code, the code that handles all the work, we don't put it in the same page. I think it's a bad design to put all the code in the same page because you need isolation. So we have the code in a CS file which is again related to this particular view so you can see there is a nice hierarchy in Visual Studio and all the code that is referring this particular view goes inside of here. Similarly in Visual Studio what you can do is you can create a CSS file that is related only to this component only to the Razor component. What you need to do is create a new CSS file add new item look for CSS in the templates Here we are and name it the same name as your component. The only difference is you will have a CSS extension after the razor extension. So we'll write login dot razor dot CSS. Now this file is going to be a sub file of login razor. It's an isolated CSS file and any code, any CSS selector, anything that you put in here is going to apply only to this particular component that you've created only to the razor component only to the login.razor component so let's th see that in action let's go to the code and here we are this is the html code for the component and we have a heading here do team logo this text let's make it bold so we'll go to h1 class form group it's a standard bootstrap class let's apply a special class let's call it special h1 and 
for this particular class let's go to our login.razor.css and create it over here special h1 and make the font weight bold let's see what happens here we are this is the preview and you can see that it's now instantly bold and that's a good thing that you can see this instantly anything that you modify in your code behind in your code in visual studio is reflected right away inside of your app your single page application you don't need to reload and you can save the time that way so you can see the logo is now bold the text is now bold and this is applicable only to this particular component outside of this component this class special h2 is not available at all because what blazor does is it's going to compile this css in a special css file which is going to be renamed and is going to be inserted only in this particular component so it's not going to be available anywhere else i hope you understand what css isolation is and what it can offer you imagine having dozens of these components and having css code that you need to apply to them individually but you have to put them in a central repository well not anymore with blazor css isolation next let's look at applying this css to child components because many times you make a parent components like we have the login components which could be made up of other components too and logically you want to have a style that may apply to multiple components in that hierarchy so what are you gonna do repeat the same style again and again isolated to each different component well that's a bad strategy and it's no better than having a single repository so what you can do now is have a series of sub components or child components that will Ref that will refer to or get their CSS styles from the parent component and let me show you how you can do this let's make this text also bold and let's put it in a separate component so here we go login.razor and let's take this text out let's create a new component using add components add razor component let's call it subheadline here we've got the subheadline code let's put in this code over here and kind of like stop the execution so that we can finish so we've got the code over here now we will apply special h1 class on this but this special h1 class is only in login.razor.css and this component is just not there so how are we going to put it there to do that first we need to make sure that this is a child component of the parent so right now it's pretty much independent but if we refer to this subheadline in inside of login.razor now subheadline is actually a child component of login.razor so what we need to do is inside of login.razor css any style that we want to apply to all the child components of that parent in this case login.razor we just need to put in a pseudo class called deep so if we decorate any style sheet item it could be uh, identity selector it could be a class selector like in i like i have over here we just need to decorate it with deep and what will happen is when you run it this class will be applied to any component that's the child in this case the child is subheadline so let's run it and see how that works here we are you can see now that this text is also bold and if we were to remove this selector from here like this let's say we remove deep and we check again it's not bold and if we put deep it's bold so you know now that to apply any style to child components you just need to put in deep over here so this completes our lesson we know what is css isolation we know how to create it in blazor and we know how to apply styles to child components i hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as i enjoyed creating it don't forget to like this and subscribe to me for more videos on programming coming to you from a practicing developer this is your best friend in programming kodajit signing off